Good morning. Uh, let's see. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Yep, Mike is working. Uh, what's up with my video feed? Let's see. I think it's the filter. Uh, let's see. There we go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Much better. Seems out of focus, doesn't it? It's like it's focusing on the microphone. Which, don't want that. Oh, well, that looks good. But it is focusing on the mic. This is crystal clear. This is not. <laughs> okay. Not sure what I can do about that. I think I got to be closer. Well, fortunately, it doesn't matter. Because we are going to embark on our fifth lecture today. And uh, it's exciting. Let me show you something. This is interesting. For whatever reason, it looks correct here. Okay? If I put this into play mode... Watch the, watch the font. Assuming it wants to cooperate and actually play. Now it looks correct. What in the world? Of course, when I do it this way, of course, of course it's going to do that. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. No big deal. Let me fix the color correction on this because it's wonky. There we go. Better. Okay, cool. Well, so what have we covered up until now? We've done... Nouns, prepositions, the article, emi. We've learned second declension, first declension. We've learned adjectives. Now it's time to learn third declension. You should have already read the chapter. This lecture is all about review. So if you haven't read the material, I'd encourage you to come back and watch this video later. The point, the structure, the purpose, the intent is that you read the material first, you come here to review, and then after you've read and reviewed, you go and practice. Practice the workbook. There's a three-part structure. Now, you don't have to do it that way. That's what my recommendation would be. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do there. Now, um... So we're going to dive into third declension today. And um, remember, in review, there's three declensions, first, second, and third. Nouns ending in alpha or eta follow second declension. Uh, no, that's first declension.
how did it get a six out of that? I don't know. Nouns ending in Omicron end in, or, or are in second declension. And nouns with a consonant, ending in a consonant, are third declension. Now, what we're talking about is the stem. The stem. So when, when the stem of the noun ends in alpha or eta, it's first declension. When the stem ends in omicron, second declension. When the stem ends in consonants, it ends in third declension. We've already covered the first and second. Today is all about the third. So here's an example from uh, Sarx, which means flesh. If you want to learn the third declension, there's really two key aspects. Learn the gender and learn the genitive. Gender and genitive. So as you learn your vocabulary, you need to learn the article because that will tell you definitively what is the gender. Then you need to learn the genitive in addition to the nominative singular because the genitive helps you see the stem of the noun. Sarx, nominative singular feminine. The stem is not Sarx. The stem is Sark with kappa. Okay? We see that in the genitive, sarcos, sarcos, flesh, of flesh, okay? So by learning the genitive, you are learning the true stem, okay? Minus the Omicron final sigma. So the stem is identified in the genitive. That's why you need to learn the genitive. You also need to learn the um, article because it'll tell you the gender, okay? So you're going to learn the nominative masculine singular. You're going to learn the uh, genitive. Uh, I'm sorry. You're going to learn the nominative singular. You're going to learn the genitive singular. And you're going to learn the article. And that's how you're going to learn your nouns, okay? You need to learn both. Why? One is for the stem. The other is for the lexicon. Because your lexicon is going to show you the nominative singular. But in order for you to understand what's going on in, in the New Testament or in the Septuagint, you need to understand what the genitive is as well so you can identify the stem. This will give you greater understanding of the, of the word, how it works, how it forms, and then you can uh, do your homework better in terms of your research and uh, figuring out what word are you dealing with. Uh, see, there's that font issue again. I don't know why it does that. If I escape... See, and now it's fine. What gives? I don't, I don't understand why it does that. What font is it? Din condensed? Okay. All right, Din condensed. Be good to me here. I'm going to have to redo all of my slides. Come on now. Slideshow. There we go. And see, now it looks fine. Whatever. Whatever. So you need to learn the nominative singular, the genitive singular, and you need to learn the article. Now, the nominative singular helps you identify for dative plural. Let's look at sarx again. So sarx is the nominative singular feminine where kappa sigma becomes C. Well, in the dative plural, we get another kappa sigma. So again, we're going to get a C followed by the uh, yoda. This is called the square of stops where you're going to get particular letters when combined with sigma, form a different letter. These are the square of stops. 
You need to memorize these. Okay? You have the labial, velar, and dental. That means the labial, these are uh, consonants formed by using your lips. P, -p, -p beta, phi. If you combine those with a sigma, you get psi. The velar, these are the ones with the roof of your mouth. Kappa, gamma, chi. You combine those with sigma, you get xi. Dental, these are like the dentist, right? The teeth. You form tav. Delta, theta, these are formed with the teeth. You add a sigma to these, and you get a sigma. So these are the square of stops. You need to learn these, because this is how you're going to be able to understand what's going on with third declension, especially in the nominative singular and the dative plural. Now, when it comes to third declension, there are several uh, noun rules. Um, ni the ni drops out when followed by a sigma. This is um, uh, a form of oblaut, okay? So look at tis. The stem is teen. The only way we know that is by learning the genitive singular. So tis, we start with the stem teen, plus a sigma, the ni drops out, and we're left with a sigma, tis. Uh, tis, tis, okay, this is the um, dative plural. We start with teen. Again, the only way we know that is the genitive singular. We know the stem, teen, plus sigma yoda for the dative plural. The knee drops out before the sigma, and we're lift, um, left with tc. Now, tav drops out when followed by a sigma, or if it's at the end of a word. So look at onomat. Onomat is the stem. The nominative singular is onoma. Okay, why? The stem ends in a tav. In the neuter, there is no ending in the nominative singular, so the tav drops off because it's at the end of a word. Look at the dative plural. Onomat is the stem, and again, the only way we know that is the genitive singular. Followed by dative plural ending sigma yoda, tav drops off before a sigma, and so we're left with onomasi. Onomasi. Okay? So, ni drops before sigma, tav drops before sigma, tav drops at the end of a word. Okay? This is your master noun chart for case endings. It includes your second declension, first declension, and your third declension, okay? So you've already seen these before, right? Masculine, feminine, and neuter, 212, sigma, epsilon, yoda, ni, yoda, omega, ni, Yoda Sigma, Epsilon Sigma. That's the masculine second declension. You've already seen the feminine first declension. No ending. Sigma, Yoda, Ni, Yoda, Omega, Ni, Yoda Sigma, and Sigma. You've seen the neuter in the second declension. Ni, Epsilon, Yoda, Ni, the uh, 
all-consuming alpha, the omega ni, yoda sigma, and the all-consuming alpha. But now you have the third declension. Now, masculine and feminine are, follow the same format. Neuter follows a similar format, but slightly different. Oh, I just spilled all over myself. Lovely. Okay, so how do you remember the third declension? I learned it this way. I would recommend you learn something similar, but use whatever mnemonic device you have to help you remember. Think of the tune West Side Story. I think that's what it is. And uh, sing, sing along with me, okay? So see ya, es son sinas. So see ya, es son sinas. So see ya is your singular. Es son sinas is your plural, okay? So third masculine, feminine, nominative singular ends in sigma. Genitive singular ends in omicron sigma. Remember, it's gonna use the true stem. The dative singular uh, ends in yoda. The accus accusative singular ends in alpha, but it can have a movable nu. And then the nominative plural ends in uh, epsilon sigma. Now, the nominative plural mirrors the nominative singular, but it adds an epsilon, okay? The genitive plural has omega ni, but it's not all consuming. So it just adds on to the end of the stem. The dative plural has sigma yoda with a movable nu. But remember, the sigma in dative plural does the same thing that the final sigma does in the nominative singular due to the square of stops. And then the accusative plural ends in alpha sigma. So that's the third masculine feminine. Now, third neuter, there is no ending in the nominative singular or accusative singular. And that's because the same noun rule applies as it did before, where um, the, in the neuter, the nominative singular and the accusative singular will match. It's also true of the uh, plural. So nominative plural and accusative plural will match. And we see that here with third declension. So you already know that part. Now, also with neuter, it follows the same principle as matching the masculine in the genitive and dative. So you can see here, genitive singular and dative singular are identical between the third masculine feminine and the third neuter. And the same is true in the plural. Genitive plural and the dative plural. Now, the only other thing is the nominative plural and accusative plural have alpha, but they're not all consuming. They are tacked on at the end of the stem. Okay? So, so sia s on sinas. So sia s on sinas. Learn that phrase, and that will really help, I, I found at least for myself, with the third declension, especially for third masculine feminine. And then you, you can figure out the third neuter just because you've already learned the other noun rules about how the neuter mirrors the masculine, genitive singular, dative singular, genitive plural, dative plural. And then the other uh, noun rules where the nominative and, and accusative uh, match each other in the neuter. So that, that really helps. Let's look at some examples. We've already seen Sarks again with the uh, header. I don't understand why it does that. It's so weird. So I went to the dentist this morning and I didn't have any cavities. They got onto me about not flossing. Maybe I'm telling you too much, but 
Uh, so I'm a little numb, and I just spilled all over myself. Is what it is. All right, so sarks. Nominative singular. The stem we see in the genitive singular is sark with a kappa. Okay? So, socia es oncenas. We can see socia is here, inherent to the xi, right? Because it's kappa sigma. So, there's the sigma. Os for the genitive singular. E for the dative singular. A, alpha, for the accusative singular. Then we have s, on, sin, with the movable nu, which in this case it's not here. So the sigma is inherent to the xi, kappa, sigma, yoda, and then as. Okay? So we have. The stem showing in genitive singular, dative singular, accusative singular, uh, nominative plural, nominative or uh, genitive plural, and accusative plural. And then in the nominative singular and the dative plural, we see the square of stops in effect. So here's onoma, name. So, nominative singular, the tav drops off at the end of the noun. But here we see it in the genitive singular, onomat, here's the stem, followed by os, genitive singular. Onomati, dative singular, here's the stem, followed by the yoda. Now, because it's neuter, the nominative and the accusative match. And then here's onomata. This should be a smooth breather. This is the uh, nominative uh, uh, plural. Okay. Onomaton, genitive plural. Okay, so now what happened... Uh, here is there was a tav, but the nominative singular has no ending, so the tav drops off. Per our square of stops, in the dative plural, we have tav plus sigma equals sigma in the square of stops. So the, t the tav uh, drops off, and we're left with sigma yoda. Onomata matching here. Okay, so that's onoma. Now, you'll want to learn tis and t. It follows a third declension in masculine and neuter, but uh, first declension in the feminine. Now, in the reading, you would have seen there's two different forms. One where the accent is in one place, one where the accent is in a different place. You don't need to worry about that as much because if it's a question, the sentence will end in a semicolon. That is the Greek equivalent of a question mark, at least in the New Testament. So don't worry about the accent so much, but really focus on the third declension and, and understanding it. And again, if you, if you use the song, this will really help. So see ya, es on sinas. And we see it here. We see so si ha s on sin us. This is third declension. So tis, the, the uh, stem is teen, okay? So that's why you need to learn the genitive singular. And then the dative singular, um, teeny. Accusative singular, tina. Plural nominative, tines. Genitive plural, tinon. Dative plural, tisin or tc. And accusative plural, tinas. Feminine, um, there is no ending. And in this case, the knee drops off. 
Uh, Tinos. Tini. You know, I think this is, uh, this is wrong. This should be... I think this is how it should be. Let me double check before I commit to it. Mm -hmm. I hate it when I second guess myself in the middle of a presentation, but. Yep, I was right. Um, these are all third to clinch it, though. I don't know why I did that. I, I was right to second guess myself because I found an error. As embarrassing as it might be, it, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, when I delivered the same lecture series in, um, at Fuller, I would still make mistakes and I had everything written down. It, it, it's just the nature of the beast, but there you go. So, T S T. Someone, who, anyone, something like that. Depends on the context, the accent, the presence of the semicolon. Uh, but it's third declension, where the, the stem is teen, which you see in the genitive singular. All right, so we went over socia es on sinas in the masculine feminine. Neuter is very similar. All of the same noun rules apply. Uh, that we've already covered. So nominative singular, accusative singular, match each other, T. It matches genitive singular, dative singular, and the masculine, feminine, and the neuter. Same thing in the genitive plural and dative plural. And then the nominative and accusative plural match each other, ending in alpha, Tina. All right? So that's T. -t. Again, look for the semicolon if it's a question. Who? If there is no semicolon, then it's someone, anyone, something like that. In context, usually we'll make it pretty clear. Now, you need to learn is mia n. Is mia n. One. There's a masculine. There's a feminine and there's a neuter, but it follows a 313 construction. So, is, not to be confused with the preposition, this is where the, the rough breather really plays a part. Okay? Is with the rough breather is nominative singular masculine one. With a smooth breather, it's the preposition into, on, among. Okay? So, this is where rough breathers super important. Uh, in the genitive singular, enos. Dative singular, any. Accusative singular, ena. Now, uh, it, is th it is third declension. So you see, socia here. There is no plural. Ones. Uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't make sense. So it's just one of one, two, one, one. Okay, in terms of your uh, translation. So that's the masculine. The feminine uses a different form. Mia. Now the stem ends in alpha, so it's first declension. Therefore, nominative singular has no ending. Genitive singular, though, takes the sigma. 
Dative singular takes the yoda subscript. Accusative singular takes the ni. This is everything you've learned in terms of first declension all right here. So that's some good review. The neuter uh, uses the same stem as the masculine, n. So we see n in the nominative singular. There is no ending in the neuter, so it's just n. The genitive singular uses enos, ma matching the masculine. The dative singular matches the masculine, just like our normal noun rules. And the accusative singular is matching the nominative singular, matching our noun rules. So there you go. This you should probably learn for simple recognition. But it's helpful in terms of understanding third declension. You should also learn pas pasapan because you will see it a lot. And it also follows a 313 construction. So in masculine and neuter, it's third declension. In the feminine, it is first declension. So uh, again, we see socia s oncenas for the third declension. It follows all the same noun rules. The stem is pan. So in the masculine, the knee drops out before sigma, so we're left with pas, nominative singular. Genitive singular, uh, we have uh, pantos. Now, the stem is actually pant, ni tav at the end, okay? So, uh, I believe what happens in the nominative singular, the knee drops, the, the tav drops, and we're left with the sigma. But in the genitive singular, they, they are um, retained, okay? And then uh, that is true in the dative singular, accusative singular, nominative plural, genitive plural, and accusative plural. What we see in the nominative singular happens again in the dative plural, and that gives us our masculine uh, uh, declension for pas. Now, in the feminine, the stem is pasa. But um, we have the, the other noun rule with the um, alpha eta shift. So uh, pasa pasis. It shifts in the genitive singular and dative singular. Pasis and pasi. But then it goes back to alpha in the accusative singular. Pasan. Pasan. Now the nominative plural continues with the alpha. Uh, pase. Genitive plural. Pason. And then the dative plural. Pases. And accusative plural. Pasas. Okay? So that's your feminine... Uh, first declension of pas. Now the neuter matches all of our noun rules that we've learned. So pan, again, punt. There's no ending in third declension nominative singular. So the tav can't be at the end of the word. It just drops off and we're left with pan. And then the genitive and dative singular match the masculine. Accusative singular matches the nominative singular um, in the neuter. The nominative plural, uh, it ends in alpha, just like we saw uh, in the 212 construction, only it is tacked on at the end of the stem, panta. Panton for the genitive plural, dative plural, pasin. These match the genitive and dative plural uh, in the masculine, so all those noun rules still uh, apply. And then the accusative plural, panta, matching the nominative plural. Pas, pasapan. So this will help you learn the third declension, but you will see these very frequently. So you should really learn this, uh, th this chart um, really, really well. So the eight noun rules, again, you'll find the full complete list on page 346 in the blue hymnal. You need to add the square of stops and the sigma changes. These will be important later on. 
when we are learning uh, some things in verbs, even though these are noun rules, square of stops are very important in the Greek language. Okay? So learn the square of stops. Learn them frontwards, backwards, diagonally, upside down, whatever you got to do, you need to learn them. Do a poster. Do some wallpaper for your computer. Do some wallpaper on your actual wall. Do something to make it fun, engaging, but memorable, okay? Whatever mnemonic device you have, you need to use it um, that works for you. The other rule, a tav cannot stand at the end of a word and will drop off. Okay, so think of onoma. Tav can't be at the end. The stem is onomat, so it drops off. And we're left nominative singular and accusative singular, onoma. Now, um, we introduced the article recently. And we've already kind of introduced some of its uses because it's more than just the, okay? The article can be flexible. It can be generally the. Sometimes you might not even translate it. Sometimes it's a weak demonstrative where you translate it as this, that, those, who, he. It could be a demonstrative pronoun, that. It could be a relative pronoun, who. It could be a personal pronoun, he. It is determined by the context. Uh, sometimes it's combined with other words, like o, oh, they, but, he. So sometimes you just need to look it up in BDAG to figure out how to translate it. And like I said, sometimes you might not translate it at all. Okay, um, so get used to stopping with the article, pausing, researching, and validating how you want to translate it, if you're going to translate it at all, because it's not always going to be the. Uh, context is key, the almighty important context, okay? Why do I have the same slide? Oh, that's right. So the article can also be used to kickstart a prepositional phrase. This is akin to an adjectival construction. So uh, the example here, pasen tis en ti ikea. The article, tis, is marking the entire prepositional phrase in relationship to the noun. It follows case, it follows number, it follows gender. So the prepositional phrase is nteikia. The noun, the head noun, is pasen. So pasen being what? Why do I have a final sigma in there? Oh, unbelievable. There we go. Pasen, tis, and t ikia. Uh, so this is dative uh, feminine uh, plural from pas. Tis is dative feminine plural. Right? N is dative. T is feminine. Ikia, feminine. So um, it, it causes it to match, right? Case number and gender. Uh, this is plural. This is plural. This is not. Um, this doesn't have to match. Keep that in mind. This is part of the prepositional phrase, the object of the preposition. Um, but this is what matches with that. And so it takes this whole clause, this whole prepositional phrase, and points back to this. All who are in the house. 
all those who are in the house. Or if you're not going to use are, all, um, it, all in the house. I think you would need to use are. All who are in the house. So the article is marking the entire prepositional phrase in relationship to the noun. It basically takes parentheses, puts it here, puts it here, and points back to here. Okay? I think that's it. I guess I didn't need to click play. Yep. So hey, follow and subscribe. If you click subscribe, I should have that fee on the lower left corner. You can click on that to subscribe. Um, there, there should also be a bell. You click on that bell, it'll notify you when I go live or when I produce new videos. Right now I'm in, a, in the middle of a daily series, uh, the Greek word of the day. In less than a year, you can learn about 300 words and that will actually help you be able to learn or, or read 75% of the New Testament. It's easy, one word a day. And I've been covering uh, the basic lexical information that Mounts gives, but then f supplementing it with information from BDAG to help you understand uh, more of its range of meaning and semantics. So uh, it's an easy way to learn slowly, one word a day. Now you can go faster than that if you want, um, by following along Mounts and, and doing uh, the vocabulary he suggests. Uh, so however you want to do it. But I would suggest you come back and subscribe and follow. And, uh, and then, you know, we'll continue to be back here uh, each week. Now, for the next nine weeks? Yeah, for the next nine weeks, I will be working Saturdays. I can't, I can't do both. I got to focus on work. So I will have Fridays off. We will be meeting starting this Friday. What is that? Uh, let's see the. F I got I gotta look it up. The eighth. So starting February eighth, we will be meeting here at nine a.m. So uh, if you if you want to, you can follow along then, or wait for the recording. Either way, that's cool. During the lecture, that's great. Um, that's kind of what I am hoping for and, and envision. This is our classroom. It's a virtual classroom. It's a free classroom, but it is a classroom. So if you have questions that you want to ask from the reading to uh, gain further clarity, that's why this is live. Okay? So come and ask questions. Um, if, you, if you want to, you can ask questions in the comments, uh, and we can... We can uh, do it that way as well so that you've got options either in the chat live or in the comments um, once it's archived so uh, that's the the ask as far as subscribing is concerned um, if you want to if you feel so led or, or just want to support me you can actually donate you can tip uh, it's all on my Streamlabs page you can support me by tipping me which is essentially just a donation um, the other thing you could do is face masks. I've enabled it. Yep. I, I've made that um, decision to accept any risk involved <laughs> where uh, you can pay, and it does support me, but you can uh, cause a face mask to change the way I look during the lecture. Uh, and uh, so it could be fun. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so if you go to streamlabs.com slash phoneofone1, uh, link is in the description below. Uh, you, can, you can either donate, tip, or do the face masks. Um, and any support would be appreciated. But it's not required. This class is free. Uh, and that's because my vision is, is I want to make biblical studies, especially Greek and Hebrew, 
accessible to everyone. I think everyone would benefit from it. It's not that hard, especially if you're learning at your own pace. Uh, and I want it to be free. You know, I spent thousands of dollars to acquire this knowledge. But I believe university is dying. I could be wrong. But I would, I would love to help make this information open and available to everyone so that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars. Now, uh, you don't even need this lecture series. You can, you can go uh, get the book and read through it yourself, but sometimes it helps to have a conversational partner. Sometimes it helps to have someone who uh, has a little bit of experience who can answer questions in case you get lost or gets a little foggy. Uh, sometimes it, it just helps, you know, if someone shares their ideas for their mnemonic devices, like the ones I've shared with you today. So um, that's kind of what I want to be, is, is that big brother, uh, that conversational partner. Um, and I hope you find it helpful. So... Um, Next week is not lecture five. Next week is lecture six. Boy, I'm just riddled with errors here. Um, and yeah, things are going to get picking up here. We are now done with nouns. First, second, and third declension. And um, soon we will get into verbs. So make sure you are really practicing in the workbook going to be important because uh, if you're not solidifying these concepts now, you're going to get lost when we get into um, when we get into verbs. Okay? So um, make sure you take your time. Highlight, color, uh, circle, do whatever you got to do to really understand how these nouns are working, how they're formed. And um, it also helps you, if, especially if you're highlighting, to see relationships in the sentences. Okay? And then when we get to verbs, we're going to be learning a whole different set of case endings. And they're not case endings, but uh, suffixes, prefixes even. So you don't want to get lost. We need to solidify the nouns now. Okay? So practice. Uh, you can look at the answer key. Online, yes, there is an answer key. No, you don't need to submit any homework. There's no test. There's no exam. So you're not doing yourself any favors if you're just cheating, right? Uh, we're, the whole point is to learn. So uh, don't cut yourself short, right? But if you, if you need to find the answer to check your work or just to help you understand something, go, go look at it. There's no harm in that. Um, and those, I've, I believe Bill Mounts has it on billmounts.com or .org or something like that. I think the, the link is down below. Uh, so you can use, utilize that. Remember, read first, lecture second, practice third. That's your, your uh, structure for really learning the, the language. But don't forget the vocabulary along the way. That's going to be important. And you can come back here for uh, the um, Greek word of the day. And that's it. So I'm going to be online later. Um, Mixer.com slash phonevone playing video games if you want to come watch and hang out. Um, and that's it. Y'all take care and we'll see you Friday for lecture six. Bye.